you. Let me introduce my wife, Nancy. Hello. Hello. My pleasure. My daughter, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hello there. My son, Rob. Hi. How are you? And my mother-in-law. Hello there. She's been so kind. So why don't we all gather here for a family picture? Let's go. Oops. I think maybe he better get in Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a few little souvenirs. We don't want you to forget us while you're gone. The same desk that, that all presidents have used? Some didn't. They would they choose not to. But this is the one that uh, Kennedy was using when John Boy was photographed as crawling out that middle panel to open. I see. But there's a history of the desk. It, uh, a whaling captain of ours many years ago up in the Arctic came upon an English uh, warship that had been. Uh, sailing vessel that had been uh, lost in the ice and abandoned there. And he brought it out. Mm -hmm. And we refurbished it here and then delivered it to Queen Victoria. Mm -hmm. And some years later, it evidently was decommissioned. And Queen Victoria had artisans carve and make the desk out of the planks of the ship mm -hmm. and delivered it here to the White House. Mm -hmm. Terrific story. Very nice. Thank you. Mr. President, we'll be uh, thinking about you a lot, but especially in Reykjavik. I was with Secretary Schultz as a member of his party in Geneva, yeah. and so as a member of your party too, and uh, we've got some t-shirts that the kids wear, and that was a, a historic moment for us too, so we certainly wish you best uh, in Reykjavik, as well, always. Thank you. I wasn't too pleased last night in the news when they showed a shot of the snow. Oh, <laughs> it's a change from Washington. Yes, oh, those are the biggest snowflakes I ever saw. <laughs> well, okay. well, good luck. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. We appreciate today. Yeah. My pleasure. Hey. Sir, think of 82 and uh, if you can mention it in a press conference or a speech, I know that would do a lot of good. The Haitian people uh, would, would certainly seize upon that, and it would help quite a lot to, for them to know that you're still thinking about them and wishing them well. All right. That'd be a favor to me. All right. <laughs> Mr. President, why don't we get one more photo with you and the ambassador alone?
help sort of business. Okay. Right. All right. All right. Souvenirs, so don't forget. Whoops. That links for you. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Well, and I understand that you had a little harrowing incident out there over the Atlantic. Oh. <laughs> yes, we did. We had to turn back to Heathrow, but uh, we're here, and I'm looking forward to a most exhilarating experience with American Salvationists. I believe our Salvation Army in America has uh, a vibrant expression of their faith, and I'm just looking forward so much to meeting them well. in uh, Atlanta. New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles, as well as here in Washington. Well, thank you, you for the great pleasure being here. You can even tell the president <laughs> you're going to Canada. <laughs> oh yes, oh, I am too. Uh, yes. In North America. I'm Commissioner Marshall, National Commander. Yes, good to see you. Well, it's good to meet you. It's quite an honor, sir. Commissioner Miller. Hi, Mr. President. I'm the new National Commander designate. Which is an easier spot to be in than either of them holds. He's a young, younger man. I'm a, I'm a younger man. And Colonel Miller. I'm Colonel Miller. Hey, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Delighted to be here, Mr. President. Delighted. Should we maybe get a group picture here? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we should. Why don't you get yes, around? Yes, let me get around over here. Yes, yes. We've got yes. to get you between us here. It's wonderful of you to see us in these very busy well. days for you. We're praying for you very much uh, for your special assignment. In Mr. Gorbachev. Thank you very much. I have a great belief in that. Yes. Awesome, very much. Yes. And thank you for all the, the work that you were. We were very inspired when we saw yourself and Mrs. Reagan on the television in Britain. And uh, I feel that when leaders of nations speak strongly in these areas, especially amongst our young people, it's really an area of uh, great concern for us all. And if the Salvation Army is involved, that's important. But I believe that when we help these young people, we don't only help them Enough medically, life. when we really try to give them a purpose in life. Well, you help us very much with particular and special cases here, yeah. particularly the holiday season. Well, you know, Mr. President, 12,000 people are today in uh, alcohol and drug, drug programs in the United States today, you know, in our centers, which is marvelous. You know, and we thank God for uh, everybody who's joining in that battle. That's great. May I take just a moment to thank you for those lovely uh, screen tapes that we yeah. featured in Dallas last month at the big uh, meeting of our volunteers. And well, last year in Macomb, Youth. Illinois, when we had the International Youth Congress with 5,000 young people. That name is familiar to me. I played football there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were three of the three, and we appreciate it. This is the war cry which is just current with the president's picture on the back and the message that you gave to these uh, volunteers in Dallas. Oh, thank you very much. I'm sure you won't have enough to read. You'd like to read that. <laughs> Mr. President, I'm, uh, I think you may have heard I'm only the second woman general of the Salvation Army. The first was the daughter of William Booth himself, 
Eva Booth, who was uh, an American citizen. Right. And I feel greatly honored to be following in her footsteps. And I thought you might like to add your own library, a copy, the most recent copy of okay. Salvation Army's history. It's bound by our own press in London, which is famous for its special bindings. In fact, it bound the history book um, of the Salvation Army, all the books. It bound the wedding Bible of Queen Elizabeth II. So they have bound the, well, thank um, you. the volume for you. And I have prayed, well, mentioned there, that I will pray that God will guide you, God will bless you. I think it's inspiring thank for Christians everywhere to know that the great political leader himself makes statements about his own faith and that's an inspiration <coughs> at all. I, Abraham Lincoln said it once. He said he was very often in this job driven to his knees because there was no place else to go. Yes, yeah, to be I have some souvenirs. <coughs> oh dear. You do. That bark doesn't sound good. It's at a visit to I so don't think about it catching. I am one of those who's allergic to pollens and have discovered <laughs> the got pollen here. capital of the world. <laughs> yeah. I'm just getting over that and now it's kind of settled down there, but it started a couple of weeks ago. Too bad. Companies for thank you, Mr. President. Gentlemen, oh, very, very nice. And uh, oh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Well, we're close allies, so maybe yeah, we are. pin with our... Oh, thank you very much indeed, Mr. That's President. Right. I uh, wear it with uh, great pleasure. Well, and um, distinction. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. I hope so. But uh, being here in America is very important because I must say that the Salvation Army in America has the largest number of Salvation Army officers of any country in the world. We mm -hmm. have 3,000 full time wow. Salvation Army officers. We have half a million now members, uh, unduplicated members of the Salvation wow. Army. And uh, I would say about a million volunteer helpers. And uh, it behoves me as the world leader to really come and have a quick look and say hello to them yes. all. Would you uh, allow me to pray with you, Mr. President? Yes, sir. And God's blessing upon you in your Particularly with the next times. week coming up. Thank you. We'll be praying for you throughout the nation. Well, thank you very much. Oh, God, our Father, we pause in this most famous spot, the Oval Room. We know that your presence is here as much as it is in any cathedral. And we pray, Father, your blessing upon President Reagan. Give him that wisdom that cometh from above, especially as he goes to these significant meetings. We ask, Lord, that to him will be that sense of calm and peace of heart. And may he know your presence with Amen. him. Amen. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. And our brother from Mrs. I shall. We, uh, yes. she's, come to, she's come to us a lot, and we're very grateful. Well, we thank God for you for that. Do you have a little more film in that uh, camera? Yes, sir, I do. I retire, and you were kind enough to say something about that in your film. Yes. Would you pause for a picture with me? Yes, certainly. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Because you made a mention of your position yeah. and. Uh, and being a woman yes. in this position, I just have to tell you a little incident. Mm -hmm. We have for the first time among the presidential military aides in the White House, for the first time, a woman officer. Well, and she right. was also, for the first time, her branch of the service <laughs> represented the Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. So one day I was teasing a little bit, having come from a meeting with some admirals of the Navy and so forth, a little bit about the Navy and so forth. And she listened very quietly, and then she said to me, she said, we feel that the Coast Guard is the unit around which the Navy gathers. <laughs> Can I tell you a little joke, Mr. President? That was when I became uh, the commander. Um, I've been preaching Sunday morning in the service, and uh, at the end of the service, as, we were, as I went to the door, all the people came out, I shook hands with them, and one woman said to me, well, she said, I'm pleased to meet you. Because when I heard we're going to have a woman commander, I said to myself, I don't, I don't like that. A woman leader. And she said, no, I heard you preach. I said to myself, there's a man of God. <laughs> Bless you, I have to tell you something. At the, at the 
Economic Summit a couple of years ago in London, where Margaret Thatcher then presided over that meeting. An Englishman came up to me at one of the social gatherings, attended upon that, and he said to me, Margaret Thatcher is the greatest man in England. <laughs> <laughs> That's what. Thank you. Thank you well, I, I pray that I will be a man of God, Mr. Peter, because uh, it's, a, it's an onerous task to be a spiritual leader. But uh, under God's guidance, I'll do my best. I can't resist it. I've got to tell you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Presiding over one of those meetings, a prime minister, no longer a prime minister of another country, uh, got way out of line. And he was complaining that she was not running the meeting in a democratic fashion and so forth. And we were really storming at her. And it was over, and we got out in the corridor. I, I said, Margaret, he was way out of line. He had no business talking to you like that. And very quietly, she said, Oh, women know when men are being childish. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again, sir. I felt grateful to you. Thank well, you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you again. And the Lord be with you. Thank 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 you.